Alright, what is up YouTube? It has been quite some time since I last filmed a video. It's probably been, God, like going on six months. Um, but I am back here to talk about some programming and like just general tips. Um, I'm not going into any sort of like super um, like technical terms, but just some basic knowledge that I think can help. And you know, if you're a beginner and you're looking into um, sort of laying out a good foundation for your training and giving it more purpose than kind of just going into the gym and winging it every time, um, I, I think it'll definitely help. So programming is an art. Um, it's, it takes a lot, you have to balance a lot of different things. So for in your programming, you're, you're basically searching for your OTS or your optimum training stimulus. So you're looking for what is going to optimally stimulate yourself to grow either strength, hypertrophy, um, or for events like CrossFit and Strongman. You're sort of looking at those different uh, components in your program and you're trying to balance um, growth, strength, as well as you have to factor in recoverability. Um, so how much you can sort of, how much you can ask of your body and then how much you have to let it uh, recover um, and the different like fiber types. This is some basic terminology that I think that will kind of help you sort of wrap your mind around um, like the different processes and stuff in your programming. So basically right here, your SRA curve or your stimulus recovery adaptation curve. As you see, starting at the, simu uh, the stimulus section here, you're gonna be stimulating or providing your body with a stimulus to grow upon. What's gonna happen? So let's say you do Maybe one day you're gonna do a set of 10 on squats or something like that. Then the next couple days, you're gonna feel it. It'll be pretty sore. And then as you start to recover from that, you give your body adequate enough recovery. You have this adaptation where you are actually going to be uh, either stronger or for hypertrophy purposes, you will be, you'll have more muscle tissue than you had before. And if we can chain as much as we can of these sort of curves together that will lead to like a very successful block so and then over here you have your so your macro meso and micro cycles um, this is basically just talking about how you can break down um, your whole sort of like training cycle into like scientific terms um, to put it easy you have like your prep which is sort of your macro cycle that's your long term like that's your whole like span between when you when you're going to start writing and to like the day you want to max out or you have a meet or you have like some sort of event that you're training for uh your mesocycle is your individual block these can range anywhere from like two three weeks to six to eight weeks however long you structure your blocks in and these are the blocks that you're going to be chaining together in order to meet your goal. And then we have your microcycle, which is your week to week um, training. Um, sometimes a microcycle can be not just a week. It can be, I know like uh, the Eric, uh, the little bridge method he has, he, uh, he actually does something where it's, it's actually like two weeks, but it counts as one, how he breaks it up. There's 14 days per microcycle. So like there's different ways you can even program that. Uh, periodization slash phase potentiation. That's just kind of like you're allocating a block or your mesocycle to one sort of purpose. So for example, if you're gonna start off, like you're in the off season or like you're just starting a prep, you would want to do something more like a hypertrophy block or like a volume block and build a really good base of foundation so that you can have better adaptation to what's going to come later and like that's the purpose of that block let's say for example like you're getting ready to meet and you're going into like a strength sort of block so you're going to start to drop the uh, volume and start to like bump up that intensity yeah, specificity very variability uh, sort of triangle if it helps you understand um, it helped me understand is that so you have a very wide base here it's very broad so the exercises and your training is going to be sort of very variable there's going to be a lot of different things you're going to do like for powerlifting for example you're you're probably still going to have some back squats in there however they might be 
pause, tempo, you might have SSB bar, you might have uh, like yoke bar, uh, stuff like that, like sort of um, trying to bring up weak points. And as you're gonna go up in time, so starting here, so the weeks, so this is like week one of your, let's say it's a six, three months, 16 week block. Um, your week one is going to be very variable. You're gonna be training a broad category of things. You're not gonna be super specific or you're not gonna be very competition specific. And then as you're getting closer to that meet, you're gonna be increasing your specificity. So what that means is that you're gonna be sort of ditching the accessory movements and stuff like that. And you're gonna be honing in on that, the bench, deadlift and squat, um, like comp style. You're not gonna be having as much variability in your training. It's gonna be very specific to what sport you're in. Have your RPE, your rating of perceived exertion. It's very subjective from person to person, but it's how hard a person kind of feels like that set was. And it's gonna be very important for you as a lifter to sort of understand that for you over time, because it's different from person to person. It's very subjective. And it's a, it's a skill you learn. And the, and the sooner you get more like in touch with your body, the easier that will become. Going over the MRV, or as like Mike Isretel, he kind of, um, not came up with the term, but he kind of definitely like sort of coined it. It's your uh, maximum recoverable volume. This is sort of how much volume you can put your body through and not actually um, put yourself in further fatigue throughout the week. This is the maximum amount of volume you can take until you actually start to decline and stop making progress. Um, this is also going to take a lot of experimentation as long as like as, as well as our uh, PE Because you have to really get to know your body and it takes time You can't just walk in the gym and just know and then the hypertrophy versus strength a lot of people say That you can't do one without the other and then if you do them both together, it's not going to be as effective however Incorporating like in most, if you're gonna do a powerlifting program, you are gonna be having quite a bit of volume. And I feel like they go very well. They go hand in hand with each other. And a lot of people disagree with that, but my opinion, um, it's like you should always incorporate both in every sort of program because like the main driver for either building hypertrophy or strength is progressive overload. It's pretty self-explanatory. So. Not really the first step, but I always like to consider, first of all, how am I gonna set up my training split? Or like, how am I gonna structure that micro cycle, that like week to week sort of um, planning out what exercises I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna spread that out to optimize my uh, fatigue and not be super burnt out going into each day. These are systems, remember, they are not like, you don't have to say um, that linear progression, like I have to do like this and this and this. For example, uh, a lot of people, if they do like West Side or like conjugate style, like max effort training, um, it's it, it's very it's a subjective way of training. That like on your max effort day, you're gonna be walking to the gym and you're gonna be doing something different for every max effort day. You don't necessarily have to go off of other people are doing. Like you don't have to go the very classic West Side style. There is new adaptations. I know Matt Winning. Um, he does things very different and he has more of a like a periodization sort of uh, approach to it. So just to, just a reminder, these are systems there. You don't have to follow them the guy, like directly because my ball just camera shut off. So really going into this, program. this is a very, uh, the block periodization. Is that is, it's a very general you. term, like a lot of things like DOP takes from this, little bridge method takes from this. Basically there's a lot of, a lot of, basically all programs are sort of periodized in some way. Um, and that means like you're specifically doing something for a specific reason. Uh, block periodization, the only thing is, is that it's a sort of uh, newer way of thinking about it is that block training is like, again, you're thinking of that block and there's a certain goal of what you're trying to achieve in that block. Again, West Side Conjugate sort of method. Um, you have a max effort day um, and that's gonna be a true max effort, usually within like three reps to like one to three reps. Uh, you have a max effort day, a dynamic effort day, and then some sort of like you can do like speed work and stuff like that. It's very controversial. 
Um, however, I mean, a lot of people have benefited from it. I think all programs are useful as long as like, you, you follow what you write and you see it through to the end. And I, I do recommend experimenting with a lot of different things to figure out what works for you. Uh, D DUP or daily undulating periodization, that's just like daily undulating, it changes. And then periodization, like there's a certain goal of like each day. So each workout is gonna be like, or each day is gonna be different and going into one another. So that can be broken down either into, like you say you have a heavy day and then a light day. And on like a Monday, you're gonna hit like some, like a, a four by eight on squats. And then the, the next day you train squat, you have like a three by three or you do some singles and then some back off sets of four. That would be sort of considered like a DUP style of training just due to the fact that you're undulating what you're doing day to day. You're not gonna go into the gym and hit a four by eight and then the next time you walk in the gym and do squats, you're hitting another four by eight. It's not like you're hitting one sort of consistent um, thing each week. It kind of varies, it undulates, it changes. So and then we have here the Lillibridge method. Like I was saying earlier, he takes sort of a, a bigger microcycle. So his week to week is actually longer and he breaks it up so that you're doing a like a heavy squat, lighter bench and like a lighter deadlift. And then throughout that two week period, he's going to be having a heavy one and a light one. And then, so then it would change the next time you come in, you're gonna hit a heavy deadlift, light other two. Then you have the heavy bench, light other two. And then, so you're looking for, what is your purpose? What are you trying to accomplish? For example, in block periodization, at the very beginning of your prep, you're gonna probably wanna uh, get rid of any weaknesses you have. Like this is your time to you build your good work capacity going up as you get closer to your meet day, again, your max out day, whatever you wanna call it. So you can have, uh, like strength blocks, hypertrophy blocks, you have a peak and then you have a taper. That's usually how people are going to structure their block training uh, or block periodization. You can have uh, accumulation blocks where you're starting to accumulate um, intensity, accumulate um, volume. Like there's so many different ways to, or purpose to give to your blocks. Break it up into max effort, dynamic effort, your volume and intensity days, your heavy and light days, however you want to do it. Exercise selection, it can be very confusing because there are many, many exercises out there that are distracting from necessarily what you need. And I definitely think beginners don't need to be doing a crazy amount of variations because like they're just, they're not technically sufficient in the basic movements like bench squat and deadlift that I don't think adding in variations is gonna help um, like get your technique down. Stick to your squat, bench, and deadlift with you know some very minor variations just so that way you're not sort of beating yourself into the ground. For example, uh, for bench, you can have a close grip bench. It's very similar to normal bench press. It's a lot of the same technique. Um, only difference is, is you're moving your grip in, more emphasis on the triceps. However, I don't think as a beginner, you don't necessarily need to be doing a ton of like Larson press, feet up bench, um, stuff like that, because you're probably not technically sufficient enough to have the proper leg drive, to have the proper basic technique on the bench press to benefit from doing Larson press. So keep it simple. It doesn't need to be super uh, broad exercise wise because the more broad you are, the less good you're gonna get at, at what you're trying to do. If you're gonna be training a bunch of different things, you're not gonna be good at what you need to be. You're gonna be a little bit good at a bunch of different things, whereas you wanna be really good at your squat, bench, and deadlift. That's why in the first weeks of like training, you're gonna to wanna to be broad. You wanna train sort of um, general uh, preparedness or what you wanna call it. And then as you're gonna move up, in weeks, you're, it's where you're gonna really wanna start hammering in uh, your squat, bench, and deadlift. If you're not a beginner, moving into what you're gonna wanna do if you're an intermediate and expert, sort of, or like professional, whatever you wanna call it, you're gonna be wanting to target your weaknesses. So let's say you have a weak lockout on bench. Um, first of all, I'm gonna definitely recommend just bench more. Like, 
it's kind of hard to say that oh like my triceps are necessarily weak which they definitely could be that's definitely one thing you could be hammering a lot of close grip uh bench variations and stuff like that block um or board presses saying like two to three board really work on lockout but a lot of those things can just be fixed with increasing the amount of times that you're going to bench in a week or squat in a week or whatever your going to be weakness is the more practice you get with the movement the better you're going to be these are different techniques for progression and or recovery so this is how you're going to actually progress your squat bench and deadlift week to week so once you've found your exercises you're going to be applying you don't have to strictly apply any of these necessarily there's tons of ways you can upset so let's say that's day uh, on a Monday you have a top set of five at a higher intensity than you do your back off sets at a five by five so this would be your top set so you can strictly progress sort of your top sets or you can go your all sets across which means let's say you don't have a top set you just have a five by five that day you can progress just the five by five and if you don't have a top set so the classic linearly like progressed or linear linear progression is your starting week one your five by ten and as you go down you're going to slowly in decrease volume increase intensity so here you have a five by ten high volume then you're decreasing volume here by two reps and a set, but you're gonna increase the intensity. Again, you're going down by two reps, you're increasing your intensity. And then again, increasing intensity, increasing intensity, increasing intensity until you hit your one rep max, which is hopefully gonna be on your meet day or your uh, max out day or whatever competition, whatever you're doing. Um, in here, you'd probably want to incorporate some deloads, so you're going to have, obviously it's not going to be this fast, you're not going to just do all of these in like a block, and then hit a, like a 1 or a max, you're going to want to structure this out so it goes a bit longer, maybe you do a 5 by 10, and then a 4 by 10, then a 3 by 10, and then you're going to go and slowly decrease that volume all the way until you hit your 1 or max. Waving. Waving is actually one of my favorite ways to set up a program or sorry set up a progression here you're gonna have uh, a 5x5 five five at a certain intensity then you're gonna actually have quite a big jump um, in intensities or weight but you're gonna decrease the volume it's a kind of a take on linear progression but it's kind of like a hack to your nervous system that as you do a wave so you're gonna go up so increase weight 3x5 since you have less sets, you can do more weight. This first week should be pretty easy. This one should be a challenge. This is going to be like a new five rep max. But then let's say once you finish your sort of wave or block of fives, you're going to drop it back down and you're going to do, maybe you're going to do start with a five by four. Then you're going to do a three by four and then a one by four. The hack is, is that when you have this really hard day and you need a lot of recovery, next week you're going into let's say it's a five by four next week it's going to be an automatic sort of deload week because it's going to be a lot easier and less fatiguing than if you were to do another week at, at this heavy weight like you're not going to be able to keep progressing in weight um because you're gonna need that recovery and it's nice because the next wave is going to be uh, slightly more weight than what you started from before but the stimulus and growth that you created throughout this wave is just going to carry over into your next wave and you're going to keep building so you're going to you're going to be going up and then down a little bit but then at the bottom of your next wave is going to be higher than the bottom where you were at your next or your previous wave so you're actually making these small jumps over time and that's what's going to lead to a lot of progress over time now step progression is it's not used as commonly however it all right now step progression um how that one works is that you're actually going to primarily be increasing volume um the other two they focus more on increasing intensity or increasing the weight in your step progression the weight's actually going to be staying the same and you're going to be adding uh volume so you're going to do like a three by eight um say we'll do it 70 percent 3x8, 70%, a 4x8, 70%, 5x8, 70%, and that's gonna build a crazy amount of work capacity. So the 3x8 at the beginning of the week is gonna it's gonna be pretty easy. 
your 4x8, it should be like a medium, uh, in like sort of difficulty. And then yeah, your 5x8 is going to be the sort of hardest part, obviously, of your uh, mesocycle. And then what's going to happen is again, kind of like waving, you're going to be deloading by gold dropping down and maybe you're going to do uh, 3x6 the next week. And that's going to be a dramatic decrease in volume compared to the 5x8 that you just did. And then you have your decrease in volume and then your decrease in variation. Um, the decrease or increase in volume is kind of what these what, what these accomplish. It's just that there's different ways of going about it. Um, then you have your decrease in variations. That just means like, for example, as you get close to your meter prep, you're going to sort of decrease the amount of variation in your training. Your variation movements, uh, you're never going to really be able to go as heavy as you can on a sort of uh, like a primary movement like your squat bench and deadlift if you're gonna be doing like pause deadlifts you're not gonna be able to pause more than you can do just with a normal uh, competition rep so by decreasing the amount of variation you're able to add more load to the bar because the movement pattern is more simple everyone sort of knows what the deload is it's you kind of you still get your touches in but maybe you just do sort of speed work with lighter weight lighter uh, less volume or you keep the volume the same but the intensity drops dramatically it's to give your body a break and to allow it to recover all right so how do you know what intensity or sort of weight you're going to be using for those said progressions um, a lot of people actually, I think, take way too much time and like thaw into this. You you want to sort of build into your program. You don't want to start like super heavy and hit a brick wall every time because you can't always just keep putting your head through a brick wall and making it through. Eventually, that brick wall is gonna freaking put you into the dirt. And a term that I learned from Alex Bromley is a is a very cool term. It's like you know how if you're gonna drive through a, puddle, a big huge mud puddle in your car you're not gonna start with your car right in front of the mud puddle and then try to gun it through you're gonna want to build a, a huge run up and build momentum and go through that so that translates into the sense that you're gonna want to start a bit lighter in your program but then actually build into it you, you want to gain momentum and carry that momentum through um, which will lead to more progress than these two here. So RPE, this is a basic RPE scale where you're gonna basically tell yourself like, was this too easy to count as a true work set? Yes. If it's not, then you're gonna kind of go step by step through this. And so if something's programmed at an RPE of seven, it should feel like a fairly quick opener. If it feels any heavier than that, then then and you'd say it's a seven. First of all, you're lying to yourself. Second of all, then you probably should have uh, lowered that weight. You want it to. You want to keep it as accurate as you can, and that's why I think um, for beginners, I wouldn't recommend going RPE based because you don't know how your body reacts to weight yet. You don't know what weight necessarily feels like at every single intensity. So you're not gonna know the, or the difference between an RP8 and an RP9. Like they both should be hard sets, but you're not gonna be able to really differentiate which one is which. All right, this is a, a modified pillow pins chart as pillow pins original chart was actually made for Olympic weightlifters. So this is sort of a pillow pins chart for power lifting. That's what the PCPL stands for. So if you're looking and you don't know how many sets and reps to do, this is a very good um, sort of base to start from. However, it is gonna arrange different from person to person um, because your MRV as well as your optimum training uh, stimulus is gonna be different. So you're gonna have to experiment with how many rep range, with the rep range, the total amount of sets per week is gonna be and at what intensity. This is a nice chart. I, I really like this one. Uh, because let's say you are doing an RP based training and you're not really sure where you should start or what weight you should start with. If say if it's like you're gonna have a set sets of a five by eight on squat, it's gonna be like your volume block, beginning of volume block, uh, five by eight 
with RPE of seven. So you're gonna go across to RPE to your amount of reps. Okay, so I should be hitting around 64% for my RPE of seven. And I feel that this is also a great chart if you're doing sort of percentage-based training, which is the percent or the sort of training that I like, I prefer. I prefer percents. Um, you can kind of look and say, okay, I want to touch something heavy for a triple. Let's say you're near your peak and you're, you should be hitting eights and nine RPEs. Then okay, maybe we'll start with a set of three at RP eight, and then. We'll go to RPE 9 next week. RPE will be at 9 or 90%. So it's a very good way to sort of break down your training and how that's going to help you sort of implement the intensity. So now getting into your peak slash tapering, this is when you're going to taper down the volume and you're going to try to peak. So the goal right here is to feel as well recovered as possible while being at your strongest. Going into your meet, you want to feel amazing you don't want to have any sort of injuries you don't want to be fatigued from the last workout you did you want to be feeling fresh you want to your you want your central nervous system to be all in check you don't want anything to be out of place you just want to go out there and do your best you don't want to have any other variables going into the meat that can affect your performance so like i said you're going to have a decrease in volume and an increase in intensity you're going to have as little variation as possible. You're probably going to be only hitting triples, doubles, or singles in your main competition lifts. And they're going to be probably pretty heavy. Now, it depends on what kind of lifter. If it's a female lifter, you can probably lift pretty heavy up like during the week, up to the week of your competition. However, if you're like a dude that's squatting over 800 pounds, 900 pounds, like you're a big guy, you probably would want to schedule your last deadlift, squat, whatever, uh, probably the second, like the second last week before your competition, and then just have some light sort of technique work going into that week, because you're gonna to want to feel as recovered as possible. You don't want your last training sessions to affect your performance at all. And now, on the other hand, you don't want to peak too early. You don't want to peak a week before your meet detrain yourself for a week and then go into the meet and actually lift less numbers than you did your second last week of training. So overall, um, this is kind of like how I approach. These are kind of like the steps, if you will, on uh, sort of breaking down your training and how you're going to program it. So I start the training split. That's sort of, how, again, how you're breaking up the micro cycle as well as what sort of what system you kind of want to use. Uh, step two, your block purpose. So what's that block's purpose? Are you going into a volume block, a hypertrophy block? Um, what is the what is the goal of that sort of time frame going to be? Three is your exercise selection. Depends on what the purpose of your block is. So that's why it has to go after. Um, as well as what weaknesses do you have? Do you have a shitty lockout? You get sort of loose in the hole. Like what's going to help that? Well, you're going to probably want to do a lot of pause squats. You're going to want to keep tension in your whole body and your brace while doing tempo squats, stuff like that. Four is your progression. Are you going to wave it? You're going to be linear. How are you going to do it? How are you going to combine that with the training split that you chose? That's also very important as you want to have good synergy with the two. And for five, you're picking the weights you're gonna use, picking your intensities, how you're structuring, how heavy things are gonna be throughout your actual program. In general, just pick a number and go. Don't think about it too much. I I, just, I recommend starting, you know, start start light. If, you, if you're not sure about something, start light. Build into it, gain momentum. And then six, you're gonna set up your, your peaking or your tapering going into your, your your meet day your max out day whatever you're going to do that's when you're going to start tapering down that volume and you're going to start taking your your last attempts feeling what your opener is going to be like feeling what your your secondary attempt is going to be like and then i would save you know any prs you're going for on the true max out day don't max out early if something's feeling good that's yeah actually good note don't max out 
anywhere in your program unless it's like volume PRs, I understand, but you do not need to be maxing out your one rep maxes. That is for your max out or your meet day. It doesn't really matter what's going on like in here. This is where you're doing all your work, your meet and max out day. That's where you're showing what you've built throughout this whole training system, or your block, or your, your splits, like all through, this is where you're building your strength. This is where you're showing it. Well, I hope that helps you guys as there are just some very basic tips in there. Um, if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, make sure to follow me. You can follow me at Braden Vict. Uh, link will be in the bio as well as the Wendigo Barbell page will also be in the bio. Um, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you.